Good morning, dear students. I welcome you in our online lecture on botany. And the topic of our today's lecture, division of angiosperms and general structure of a flower. Plan of lecture, angiosperm-derived characteristics, distinctive features of angiosperms, basic structure of a flower, floral symmetry, floral formula and floral diagrams, reproduction of flowering plants, and pollination and fertilization. This is a list of literature, list of references where you can find detailed information about angiosperms, gymnosperms, and also about the structure of a flower. Now, as you already know, the kingdom of plants, Latin name Plantae, Plantae divides into two divisions, gymnosperms and angiosperms. You also know that the kingdom is the highest taxonomic unit. Now, what's the difference between gymnosperms and angiosperms? What characteristics differentiate gymnosperms from angiosperms? And the main uh, characteristics that differentiate gymnosperms from angiosperms include flower, fruit, and endosperm in the seed. Gymnosperms are uh, flowerless plants. They produce cones and, uh, and seeds. Both angiosperms and angiosperms are seed-producing plants, but uh, unlike angiosperms, gymnosperms don't, don't produce flower and fruit. Gymnosperms are vascular plants and uh, they are, um, include conifers, cycads, ginkgos, ginkgos and gnetophytes. And the term gymnosperms means, from the Greek word, uh, naked seed. Uh, as gymnosperms have an enclosed seed, uh, an enclosed seed on the surface of scales and, uh, or leaves. And gymnosperms include 12 main, main families, 83 genera, which contain more than 1,000 known species. And gymnosperms uh, are the first plants uh, to inhabit, they are believed to be the first plants to inhabit land, appearing in the Triassic period uh, around 370 million years ago. Uh -huh. Cones of uh, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Angiosperms, uh, another name, flowering plants, because they produce flower and fruit, and this future distinguishes them from angiosperms. And uh, another name of angiosperms are magnoliophyta. Uh, angiosperms are the most diverse group of plants uh, with 460 families, approximately 13,000 known genera, and 300,000 uh, so, uh, known species. Angiosperms, the main characteristics that distinguish angiosperms from gymnosperms include uh, flower, uh, endosperm within the seed, and production of fruits that contain the seed. And today's uh, angiosperms uh, are the dominant terrestrial plants in the world. And etymologically, angiosperm means a plant that produces uh, a seed within an enclosure. In other words, fruiting plant. And the term angiosperms comes from the Greek word, uh, angion meaning case or casing, and sperma meaning seed. Now what's the importance of angiosperms? Um, the agriculture is almost entirely dependent on uh, angiosperms, which provide all plant-based food, and uh, also they provide a significant amount of livestock feed. And most families that include angiosperms, uh, angiosperms are very important. And one of them, the most important family, is Poacea or grass family. Uh, they provide uh, the bulk of the livestock or feedstock. And uh, for example, uh, mice, rice, rye, wheat, oat, sorghum, sugar cane, and etc. The Fabacea or legume family comes in second place. For example, bean, pears, alpha, alpha, and etc. Also of high importance, salanacea, tomato, potato, eggplant, pepper. They are source of food for human. 
and most of our fruits come from the Rotatia family, uh, which include lemons, oranges, grapefruits, and also the representative of Rosatia family, apple, pears, apricots, plums, and etc. And angiosperms also provide an economic resource, uh, economic, um, resource in the form of fiber, paper, wood, uh, medicines, uh, and decorative and landscaping plants, and many other uses. Also, angiosperms, uh, they are source of 18% of uh, world's food. They provide oxygen. They are source of many medicines. They provide lumber for construction and manufacturing of, of furniture. They provide fuel, clear our, our atmosphere. Uh, large trees are effective windbreakers. They also decrease soil erosion, and they provide habitat for many organisms. And as I've already told, the main distinguishing characteristics of angiosperm is the uh, flower. Uh, what's a flower? Flower is a structure originated to protect avus, which are born naked. And uh, we will look at the generalized structure of a flower to get familiar with the parts of the flower. And all, also all flowers come, come in various shapes, size and um, colors, but all of them are based on the same plant. And the flower is an angiosperm structure specialized for sexual reproduction. And you also know that there are two types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Let's note this. Two types of reproduction, asexual and sexual. And the organs of asexual reproduction are spores and cell spores. The organs of sexual reproduction are gametes. There are two types of gametes, male gamete and female gamete. And two types of gametes, male gamete and female gamete. They fuse and form a zygote. They form a zygote and zygote develops into the embryo of the seed and seed gives rise to the new plant. Uh, now, what's the flower? Flower is a specialized shoot with up to four rings of modified leaves called floral organs. They are sepals, petals, stamens and carpals. Sepals and petals are sterile organs of the flower, uh, are sterile organs. Stamens are the male reproductive organ, consists of two parts, uh, filament and answer, uh, and carpals is the female reproductive organ, consists of also three parts, uh, ovary, style, and stigma. Now let's get familiar with the main parts of the uh, flower. One of the parts of the flower is, is pedicel. Pedicel uh, supports the flower and connect it to the stem. Another part is receptacle. Receptacle is a part of the flower that other floral parts are attached. Sepals, sepals they are uh, modified leaves. They may be green or colored. They form a ring around the uh, other uh, organs of the flowers, other parts of the flowers. And in the buds, uh, sepals, they uh, protect uh, other floral parts and uh, generative uh, reproductive organs of a flower. And collectively, all sepals of the flower are called calyx. They form a calyx. Collectively, they form a calyx. Inside the calyx are petals. Petals may be uh, white or colored. Uh, petals uh, surround reproductive organs of a flower, um, and uh, they are collectively known as corolla. Corolla. A calyx and a corolla together they form perians. Perians. Perians uh, protect, surround reproductive 
parts of a flower and protect them and also they attract pollinators. And inside the petals are stamens. Stamens uh, also from male reproductive organs. Stamens uh, are spore producing organs. Stamens consist of two parts. A slender stalk called filament and answer. Answer produce pollen. Pollen is male gametophyte and pollen is formed inside the answer. And uh, collectively all stamens of a flower are called andratium. Andratium. Andratium uh, from the Greek word means andros, man, and oikos, uh, house, wom a man's house. Andratium means man's house. And, uh, uh, and uh, um, small uh, secretory uh, structures called nectaries are found at the base of stamens in the flower, and which provide food for pollinators and also attract them, attract pollinators for pollination. And the innermost part of the part of the flower, the way you can find female reproductive organ, it's often uh, made up of one pistil. Pistil is a female reproductive organ and is located in the center of the flower. Pistil uh, may be made up of one, two, or more carpels. Carpels, uh, they are modified leaves. They are also uh, are known as megasporophylls. And uh, stamens are micro microsporophylls. Uh, carpels are megasporophylls. And uh, collectively, all carpels of a flower are called gynaecium. Genation. Genation means genus woman and oikos house, woman's house. And um, pistil, pistil. If the pistil, if the genation is made up of one carpal, the genation is called monocarpus. If genation made up of one, of two or more carpals, uh, the genation is called apocarpus. If the genesium is made up of two and more carpals and they are fused, the genesium is called syncarpus. Let's note this. If one carpal, genesium is called monocarpus. If two or more carpals, genesium is called apocarpus. If two and more, and they are fused, genesium is called syncarpus. And the pistil, female reproductive organ, consists of three parts. A swollen base is called ovary. Ovary contain a wool. There may be one or several ovules within the ovary, and uh, within the ovary, and they are uh, each ovule is attached to the cell wall of the ovary by a short stalk. And the tip of the uh, pistil is enlarged and lobed. This is stigma. Stigma is the receptive surface. Here, pollen land, male gametophyte pollen uh, lands uh, on the surface of the stigma. And the part which connects ovary with the stigma is call, called style. The three parts of the pistil is uh, ovary, style, and stigma. Uh, this is ovary with one ovule, which attached to the cell wall with a short stalk. After fertilization, the ovary of the flower of the pistil matures and turns into the fruit. Ovule matures and turns into the seed. Uh, this is seed with uh, three main parts, it consists of three parts. Embryo, uh, food store, uh, store food materials, and seed coat. That is flower, this is pistil of the flower, stamens, and petals, carola. And uh, the four main parts of the flower are follows, sepals, petals, stamens, and pistil. If the flower consists of, of contain all these four parts, the flower is called complete flower. If the flower lacks 
any of these parts, the flower is called incomplete flower. An incomplete flower that lacks pistil is called staminate or male flower. And the incomplete flower that lacks uh, stamens is called pistillate or female flower. If the flower lacks pistil, it's called staminate or male flower. If the flower lacks stamens, stamens, the flower is called pistillate or female flower. Or female flower. This flower uh, lacks, pist uh, lacks uh, pistil and uh, is called male flower. This flower lacks stamens and is called pistillate flower. And uh, there are two types of flower. Uh, there are two types of flower: bisexual flowers and unisexual flowers. And unisexual flowers. Bisexual flowers contain both uh, and male and female reproductive organs. That means that if the flower have uh, and pistil and stamens, the flower is called a bisexual flower. If the flower lacks either pistil or stamen, the flower is called unisexual either pistil or stamens. Now, what is dioecious and what is monoecious plant? If the species uh, contain, if the species have both male and female flowers on the same plant, the plant is known as monoecious. For example, corn is monoecious because on one plant, on the same plant, plant you can find and male and female reproductive female uh, flowers. If the plant contain both f uh, female and male flowers, the plant is called, the species is called monoecious. Uh, for example, date palm is dioecious. Why? Because on one plant you can find male flowers, on another plant you can find female flowers. Uh, that means that uh, these species, these plant form uh, male and female uh, flowers on separate plants. On one plant are formed male, on another plant are formed female flowers. Uh, uh, and examples for monoecious plants, uh, mice, cucumber, melon, hazelnut, oil palm, walnut, um, uh, cucurbita or squash plant, uh, what that plants are uh, monoecious. And examples for dioecious plants, uh, willow, poplar, uh, mulberry, uh, kiwi fruit, uh, salgo, kinko, spinach, cloudberry, and papaya. These plants are dioecious plants. Uh, for example, cucurbita or squash plant uh, is the classic example for uh, monoecious plants with unisexual flowers. Uh, you, have may grow, you may have grown uh, cucurbita in your garden and when the plant uh, prepares to uh, grow and prepares to make its fruit, it must produce flower. And if you closely examine the flowers of cucurbita or squash plant, you will notice that one uh, flower has pistil and no stamens and another flower has stamens and no pistil. And this future makes this plant uh, a classic example of Monoecious plants with unisexual flowers. Now that's all for, for part of the flower, for, for flower. And now what is floral symmetry? Floral symmetry is defined by the petals. 
Uh, if the flower, if the corolla, uh, or petals of the corolla are the same size and shape and they are equidistant from each other, the flower has radial symmetry and the flower is called radial or actinomorphic. If the flower has radial symmetry, the flower is called regular or actinomorphic. Actinomorphic. In actinomorphic flower, in actinomorphic flower, any line, any line drawn from the center will divide this flower into two, four or more identical halves, identical parts. And most flowers have actinomorph uh, are actinomorphic. That means that they can be divided into three or more identical sectors in which, uh, in which each a part, each half, is identical to each other, is related to each other, and by the rotation to the center of the flower. And examples for radial flowers, for flowers in, uh, with radial symmetry, is lily, orange lily, rose, hibiscus, ranunculus, and etc. Et and if the petal of the corolla, one of the petals of the corolla is different, the flower has bilateral uh, symmetry, bilateral symmetry. You can uh, divide, this flower can be divided only into two identical parts. And this flower is called irregular or zygomorphic flower. If, if the flower has bilateral symmetry, the flower is called irregular or zygomorphic. Zygomorphic. And examples for zygomorphic flowers are orchids, uh, representative of Fabatia, violets, and etc. But there are some exceptions for flowers that have no symmetry, and such flowers are called asymmetrical flowers. And uh, examples for asymmetrical flowers are, is broccoli and cauliflower. These, uh, you can divide this flower into uh, only into two uh, identical parts. You can get uh, even two identical parts from these flowers. That's why these flowers don't have symmetry, and they are called asymmetrical flowers. Uh, the brilliant regular flower of Hypericum calicinum develops a superior ovary. I will explain to you later what's uh, superior ovary. And with five spreading styles at its apex and numerous stamens, a large number of stamens, uh, uh, which are arranged in five clusters, in five uh, rows. This is favorite spring flower, Narcissus. This is corolla of the flower. This is uh, calyx and inferior ovary. And inside the corolla are stamens and pistil. Now, what is floral formula and floral diagram? In the 19th century, uh, the two uh, contrasting methods of describing uh, flower structure were discovered, were introduced. They were floral formula and floral diagram. Now, what is floral formula? Floral formula is a system of representing floral parts using uh, specific numbers, letters, and symbols. And typically, floral formula is used to represent uh, the flower structure of a plant family rather than a particular species. And uh, to for the describing of a plant, of the structure, of flower structure, uh, following symbols are used. And the symmetry of the flower is represented by these symbols. Symbol of actinomorphic flower, actinomorphic flower, this is a symbol of zygomorphic flower,
The sexuality of the flower are represented by the next, by the next uh, symbols. This is a symbol of male flower. This is a symbol of female flower. This symbol is represented by sexual flower. And next, uh, symbols are used for the describing of floral structure. K is a symbol of calyx. K represents calyx. X, number of sepals. K is used for corolla. And X, number of petals. A, and ratio. and ratio, X number of stamens, and G, genesium. X number of carpus. And uh, if perians, perians is represented by P. And what is now, what is ovary position? If the ovary is attached to receptacle, and if the ovary is uh, located below other floral parts, above other floral parts, the uh, ovary uh, is superior. If the ovary is attached to receptacle and there is below other floral parts and uh, is free, not fused with another floral part, the ovary is called half uh, inferior. If the ovary uh, is lays below other floral parts and fused with them, the ovary is inferior. And if uh, ovary position is denoted by over and underlining, if the ovary is uh, superior, we underlining be, uh, below. If the ovary inferior, we underlining uh, above. Is the ovary half inferior? We underlining both uh, above and below. And floral formula would appear something like this. Something like this would appear, the floral formula. For example, the flower is bisexual, the flower is actinomorphic, the number of calyx 5, sepals 5, the number of petals 5, and ratio, for example, stamens 5, is genesium is monocarpus, and uh, genesium is ovary is superior, we underlining uh, below. Uh, and now I would like you to write, let's write uh, floral formula for some most important families of angiosperms. For example, uh, for rosacea, floral formula of rosacea, the, flowers, uh, the flower is bisexual, the flower is actinomorphic, calyx 5, co 5, and ratium from 10 to uh, indefinite. If there are numerous number of stamens, a large number of stamens, we use the symbol of indefinite. And the genesium from indefinite to one. Ovary is superior. This is floral formula for Azace family. Let's write for Fabace. Fabace. The flower is bisexual. The flower is zygomorphic. Calyx 5, co, 1, plus 2, and plus 2. Uh, if the parts of the flower are fused, we write them in brackets. If free, they, uh, without brackets. If they are fused, we write them in brackets. And, and ratio, 10. 9 from them are fused, 1 is free. Genesium is made up of one carpal, and ovary is superior. Solonate. The flower is bisexual. 
actinomorphic K5, K5, and all of the parts of the flower are fused. Andresium 5 and fused. Genesium made up of two carpos and fused. That means that the genesium is a thin carpos and ovary is superior. Now, what is uh, floral diagrams? Fro floral diagram is a graphic representation of flower structure. It shows the number of floral organs, their arrangement and fusion. Okay. For example, this is a symbol of uh, sepals, this is a symbol of petals, and they are fused, stamens, and pistil. And floral formula uh, are useful for flower identification and can, or can help in understanding angiosperm evolution. Floral di diagram for Salanacea, uh, sepals five and they are fused, Petals five, they are fused, five stamens, and genesium is made up of two carpels. Now, uh, reproduction of flowering plants. How flowering plants reproduce? Flowering plants reproduce uh, sexually by the union of male and female uh, gametophytes uh, through, uh, through fertilization. Male gametophyte is pollen grain, This is pollen grain. Pollen grain is formed in an answer and is called male gametophyte. Ovul is female gametophyte. Ovul is formed inside the ovary. Male and female gametophyte fuse through fertilization and make a zygote. Zygote uh, develops into the embryo of the seed and seed gives rise to the new plant. But before fertilization takes place in the ovary, pollination must occur. And what is pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen from an answer to a stigma. There are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen from an answer to the stigma of the same flower or to the stigma of another flower on the same plant. Self-pollination requires both male and female uh, organs parts on the same plant. And uh, only complete flowers uh, having both stamens and pistil can pollinate themselves. And incomplete flowers on the same plant can pollinate each other only if one of the flower is pistillate and another flower is staminate. But uh, cross-pollination is a transfer of pollen from an answer to the stigma, uh, to, from an answer of one plant to the stigma on another plant, but of the same species. And uh, many plants uh, can fertilize themselves through self-pollination, but uh, this is not an effective means of, of reshuffling genes within a species and increasing variety. Cross-pollination is most effective is in creating new combination of genes within the plants. This is anther, uh, and the anther produce pollen. As I have already told, pollen is a male gametophyte, and anther uh, is located in an exposed position to make it easy for uh, animals and for the wind to disperse pollen. That is a cross section of an answer, and answer each answer have four chambers, pollen chambers or uh, pollen sacs, and with, uh, within the pollen sac, diploid cells develop into pollen grain. Pollen grain, they collectively together, pollen grain uh, are called pollen, and it diploid cells within the uh, pollen sacs, they contain two sets of chromosomes. And when the pollen sac, when the answer matures and open, it releases thousands of pollen grains. And after being released from an answer, 
pollen is carried by the wind or animals and can uh, find their way to the stigma of the same of another flower. And the ovary, the female reproductive organ, ovary produce ovules. Ovule is a female gametophyte. There can be a one or several ovules within the ovary and each of them, as I've already told, is attached to the wall of the ovary by a short stalk. And each, uh, by a short, uh, one, or uh, here you can see one ovule inside the ovary. And the ovary produces female gametophyte called embryo sac. Uh, ovule produce ovule, ovary sac, form ovary, embryo sac. Embryo sac is female gametophyte. The embryo sac contains seven cells. One uh, of them much larger than the others and have two polar nuclei. The polar nuclei can be fertilized by the pollen and to form endosperm or food in the seed. And the other cell is egg cell, which can be fertilized by the pollen to form zygote. And each nucleus in the embryo sac has one set of chromosomes, one, set, one N chromosomes. And uh, what happens after uh, pollen grain lands on the surface of a stigma? And as I've already told, this process is called pollination, when uh, pollen is transferred from an answer to the stigma. And after pollen uh, grain pollen lands on the surface of a stigma, uh, and uh, I should have told that the pollen grain contains two cells. This is pollen grain and contain two cells. Grain, pollen grain consists of two cells, generative cell and vegetative cell. And vegetative cell. After the pollen grain lands on, on a stigma, a uh, vegetative cell of the pollen grain grows and form a pollen tube, form pollen tube. Full pollen tube continues to grow through the pistil for several hours until it reaches embryo sac. And uh, when the pollen tube reaches the embryo sac in the ovary, it digests a hole, a hole in the embryo sac wall. After this, pollen tube disintegrates and uh, generative cells divide, divide and form two sperm. One of sperm, uh, sperm cells, one of sperms uh, reach the egg cell and fertilize it. This process is called fertilization and the egg cell uh, and they form zygote. They fuse, one of the sperms fuse with egg cell and fertilize, fertilize it and form a zygote or fertilized egg. And this process is called fertilization. The zygote, the zygote, zygote is, is formed by fusion of sperm and egg cell. The zygote is a diploid cell diploid cell containing two sets of chromosomes, one from egg and one from the sperm. The two haploid polar nuclei fuse and form diploid fusion, fusion nucleus. After this, they fuse with another sperm and form an endosperm. The second fertilization result is an endosperm nucleus. The endosperm nucleus has triploid chromosomes, three set of chromosomes, uh, one from the sperm and, and two from polar nuclei. And uh, the ovule of flowering plants, the ovule or embryo sac of flowering plants undergo double fertilization. One sperm nucleus fuse with uh, egg cell and form zygote, the other sperm nucleus fuse with uh, polar nuclei and form endosperm, and this process is called double fertilization. And this is a zygote develops into an embryo of the seed, zygote develops into the embryo of the seed, and endosperm because the stored food that nourishes the embryo. A seed is a matured ovule consisting of three parts, 
embryo endosperm or reserve food materials and seed coat and as I have already told after fertilization ovary matures and turns into the fruit ovul matures and turns into the seed and um, I would like to say that double fertilization is a phenomenon unique only to angiosperms and uh, double fertilization uh, was uh, discovered by Navashin in 1898 and fertilization summarized the sperm and egg cell are haploid cells each contain n chromosomes fusion occurs when the sperm and the egg nuclei combine to form a zygote that is first fertilization the zygote nucleus is deployed and contains two n chromosomes and in flowering plants, only in flowering plants, a second fertilization takes place. And the two haploid polar nuclei inside the embryo sac combine to form fusion nucleus. After this, the fusion nucleus is, fusion nucleus is deployed and contains two N chromosomes, two set of chromosomes. And the second sperm of the pollen grain fuse with the fusion nucleus to form the endosperm nucleus and the endosperm nucleus is triploid and contains three sets of chromosomes. Uh, this process is called double fertilization and as I have already told this process uh, is only unique to angiosperms, to flowering plants. The main distinguishing characteristics of flowering plants include flower. They produce, unlike gymnosperms, angiosperms produce flower. They produce fruits that contain the seed. They, uh, seed, uh, they, they have seed, an enclosed seed within uh, the fruit. Uh, in other words, they are called fruiting plants. And this future differentiate uh, angiosperms from gymnosperms. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you for attention.